G'day and welcome to the Grow Small Business Podcast. I'm your host, Troy Truen. Each week, we speak with an owner who has grown a business with 5 to 30 team members to something bigger. Diving into their numbers and unearthing the pain they've experienced, we explore what they did to overcome each barrier and what they would do differently from day one. Let's get into it. Welcome, everyone. Today, I'm interviewing Lucy Nelson from 2XN, based in the UK countryside. Thanks for your time today, Lucy. That's my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me on. And especially because it's 6.30 in the morning in the UK, evening here my time. So uh, thank you for getting up so early. So how we know each other, Peter, our podcast editor, did reach out and ask for you to come on as a guest uh, to help us, one, to help us balance up the, the male-female ratio on the cast, which we're almost at 50-50, which is great. So really appreciate you helping us on that cause. That's my pleasure. Loving the 50-50 split. <laughs> Tell our audience a bit about your business, what it does and how it makes money. Two X N is a it's a digi- it's a marketing firm essentially. So we are we work on an agency basis with our clients, and we specialize in the healthcare industry. So we make money obviously in a in an agency type setup, and we started with in line with the explosion of growth in the digital arena when it came to patient research. When they you know when people are looking for how to and where to go when it comes to decisions about making their, managing their care and um, the vast amount of information available makes it quite hard for people to decipher exactly who and where, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a tickle. <laughs> Sorry. Makes it hard for them to, to decipher, you know, who and where and how to go about this. So the founding aim of 2XN was to help patients navigate that journey and the avalanche of data, ensuring that surgeons and doctors are accurately represented online. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. So our ethos is to work only with doctors who share our vision. And so people who are, who we would be happy for our family to be operated on by or to be looked after, we represent them. So it's kind of a virtuous circle in the, we look after the best of the best yep. and that's how we pick and choose our clients. So right. we are a little discerning in that sense, I guess. Yeah. Great. Oh, it sounds like a much needed service that you offer. Yeah. We hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, tell us how you started out. So I identified a need for the business in, I've always worked in healthcare um, since I left university actually. So in my previous role as a medical sales rep, I, I was looking after consultants in both the private and public sector, but it was only when my mum came to need surgery that I realized just how much information was available online and how often that that's unclear or just plain incorrect. Yep. So I resolved to rectify that by bringing accurate and relevant information to the fore. And I pitched to a client, a potential client, and I said, look, this is what I'd like to do. And this is how I'd like to do it. And this is how I think it might help you. And it went from there. So they were client number one and it just kind of snowballed from there. Um, and having researched other healthcare marketing firms in kind of the, the same area, I failed to find one that does the full strategy and implementation. Yep. Therefore, therefore, you know, identifying a niche for 2XN yep. and then it was born. Great. And what year was that? Did you start out? So I registered the company at the very end of 2017 and started with a bang 2018. Yep. Great. And how old were you then in 2018 when you started? I was 27. Wow. Great. Um, And do you have any key numbers you can share to illustrate the growth of the business? I do. So year one, I was completely on my own. I did it all myself. I did the accounting, the sales, the pitches, the implementation, and, and we did about 115,000 yep. pounds revenue. Yep. Then doubled that in 2019 up to 220. Then we got hit with 2020, which yes. was uh, a little challenging, but you know, we we're still here, we're still going, we're still we are now still growing again. So we dropped down slightly, but 2021 looks looks pretty positive. So we're back on the up, which is great. Right. And what about uh, FTE team members? Obviously, so, yourself and- yeah, as I, as I said, in, in 2018, it was just me. Yep. At the very end of that year, I hired, I took on my first hire. 
Uh, so she is a part-time. Mm-hmm. Then mid-2019, I took on another one, and we are now a team of five. Great. So FT of three or four, would it be? Yeah. Full-time. FT, full-time equivalent of three and a half. Great. <clears throat> Excellent. And when was the moment you felt like you'd succeeded? <laughs> I'm not sure I've had that yet. I'm uh, still, still working on it. Uh, I think... I think we were really heading towards that moment at the start of 2020. There was a real, you know, drive behind it and it was, it was going places. So we kind of put that on pause, but then I, you know, you look at the small stuff and seeing my team in a room together when we're allowed, putting their heads together, brainstorming about a new client that's come on board or how, what we're doing for an existing client. And that buzz in the room is you take a step back and you look at it and you think this is pretty cool. Yeah, and wow, that they're there because of you. You've created this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a nice feeling that one. And what does success look like to you? Is that anything different from what you've just described? I think there's two parts to it. Obviously, there's the there is the financial side. There's there's a certain joy you take as a business owner in looking at the numbers and mm-hmm. looking at the figures and seeing that growth. But then there's there's also the the balance side of it, being able to work to your own schedule. You know, if you want, if I want to take a day or a, an afternoon to do something that I really need to do for me, no one's telling me I can't. Yep. <laughs> and you, you can balance it a bit better yourself, but then you also end up working at 10 p.m. on a Sunday night sometimes. So it's, I think success, it changes as well over time. Yep. It's good having that flexibility and the choice. Yeah. 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 Number one thing you'd recommend to marketing a fast growing business your clients are your best marketing tool. Yep. All of our clients have come from word of mouth. Mm -hmm. We actually haven't done a major marketing drive yet. That's high on the agenda for this year, but our our client base was born out of previous customer service excellence. So our first clients were secured through my previous role and then carried through now. And it's been instrumental in the expansion of 2XN. So everyone I've hired as well has bought some clients with them. Yep. So they've, they've been, great in their previous roles of whatever they were doing, albeit a different type of role. None of them had worked in pure marketing before, Mm -hmm. but they've all worked with people who have thought very highly of them and therefore we've had an in with them. So our customer retention rate is really high as well. So we have a lot of people who have been with us since the get go. So it's, I think, I think the, the really relationship marketing and and the word of mouth is is just you can't beat it yeah absolutely how did you fund your business uh myself so i just bought a laptop and i invested in my own time and then i got the first client through the door i used that to just live a bit and breathe and then the next client came, I worked a bit harder. The next client came, I worked quite a lot harder. Yep. The next one came and I worked very, very hard. And that's how it was funded, not through, I didn't have any investment. Great. And no bank finance or anything like that? Nope, just me. <laughs> and if you were to start up today with plenty of funding, would you go into your industry? Oh, that's a tough one. Mm. If, yes, because I love it. And yep. the, the morals and the ethos behind why we do it is why we do it. However, with 2020 throwing at it at us what it did, it's hit the private medical sector pretty hard. Mm So I'm excited for the regrowth and I'm really excited to see what comes next. And I think it will come back stronger. Yep. But it's a when it was growing in the way it was growing, it's amazing. Then you get hit with the tough bit and then you come back again fighting. And so yes, I think I would. Yep. Great. Can you outline the most stressful point in your small business growth journey so our audience can learn from it? Oh my gosh, yes. Doing everything myself. When you are doing your invoicing, you're doing your accounting, you're trying to do your VAT return. Yeah. Uh, you are your sales, you put your sales hat on one minute, then you put your pitching hat on the next minute, and then you put in your, I'm going to be a creative and di- design loads of social posts hat. Yep. And then you think, oh my gosh, my social life, where's that gone? Let's build that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, doing it all yourself. <laughs> and what area in business do you feel you've had to work on the most to add the greatest value? Myself yep. for 
balance and delegation. Mm -hmm. I have really had to work hard on delegating and handing over a couple of clients to new team members because it's the hardest when it's your baby. It is hard. Yeah, I certainly got struck with that early on in my career, but uh, the only way to grow is to delegate. Yeah, you definitely cannot do it all. No. Did you end up um, delegating and carving off the bookkeeping and all the, you know, the finance and admin? So I have an accountant, but I've got a great accountant who's educated me a lot on doing, using online accounting software. So I'm pretty lean with my outgoings when it comes to things like that. So Mm -hmm. I like to have a good handle on my figures as well. So I do a lot of that stuff still myself. I do all my own invoicing and I do my own um, bookkeeping. Yep. but I do it in a much better way than Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> oh yeah. My God. <laughs> and what have you enjoyed the least about managing the fast growth? Um, Ooh, that is a good question. What have I enjoyed the least? The having your time taken away, I guess mm-hmm. when it's growing at the rate that it initially grew, where you're doubling year on year, you suddenly realize that it's Thursday and the stuff you were meant to do on Monday hasn't happened because Sanso rang you and this client rang and yep. you, that moment that that window that you carved out for yourself is just gone. Yeah. Yeah. And but what then you, also that's why it grows well. Yeah, exactly. And what do you love <laughs> most about growing a small business? I love working for myself and I love, I love having the autonomy and the ability to react fast or be pre- come up. The girls might come up with an idea and we say, yeah, okay, let's do it. And we can do it right there. And then there's no, there's no hoops to jump through. There's no red tape. There's no corporate structure. You don't need to sign off from the CFO or anything like that. You just go, okay, let's try it and let's make it work. Yep. I think that's the best. Yeah. Me too. And what's been the biggest mindset shift for you in your small business growth journey? The biggest mindset shift I would say is knowing, let's go back. The biggest mindset shift would be understanding that it's going to work and it does work. And when you get it right, it's amazing. And having that belief in yourself that, yeah, actually this is, this is pretty cool and we can do this. Yeah. There's a lot of self doubt there early on, isn't there? That I haven't done the right thing. Is this going to work? Yeah. Particularly in a in an industry that is, and is, I'm not a massive feminist or anything like that, but I in a in a bit in a industry that is pretty male dominated. Like you look at the number of surgeons and doctors who are male versus at the top of their game who are uh, female. Yep. It it you know you have to show up with confidence and be a little bit ballsy that you deserve your place in that room yep. and that you are just as good as everybody else in that room especially when you're that bit younger. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And what's the number one habit you think a small business owner needs to develop and maintain? I think show up and deliver and graft. So be that muck in with your team or you need to be present on social media all the time or whatever it is, wherever your business, the important bit of your business is, you've got to do it and you've got to do the hard work with the team. There's, yes, delegating is, is great and all the rest of it, but you have to also be there, be present and do the time. Yep. Find it hard to define a clear strategy, then communicate it and execute it alongside the rest of your team? Or you currently don't work a simple quarterly strategic plan to boost your team's performance? Our Business Growth Formula online course is perfect for small business owners with five to 30 team members wanting to grow. We share the mindsets, habits and tools to be a legendary leader in your business. GrowSmallBusiness.com. And can you talk to how you've added people to the team, some wins, mistakes and advice for those listening? Yeah. So, I mean, the accountant was the best decision ever. Mm-hmm. Having somebody, I swear, sometimes she's like my therapist. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she's amazing. So she doesn't work full time for us. I just, she's just there when I need her and I can ask her questions. That is the number one first thing I did. And it was the best decision. Yep. Then... I have never advertised for a job. I've never said, okay, I need somebody who does this. I have worked to the point where I can't work anymore and do it myself. And then looked for somebody that I know or have known through somebody 
that is the right personality type. They might not have the skill set, but my my advice would be to go to the go for the personality type. So everybody on my team is of the same mindset as me. They work super hard. They're proactive. They pick stuff up really quickly. So if they don't come and join the team with the right skill set, they might not be the best at using Excel or preparing a presentation, but those skills you can teach the personality type. You can't totally agree. There's something I say in my coaching to managers and CEOs, et cetera, is to hire for attitude and aptitude. As long as the person has, you know, the right attitude and they're smart, you can teach them what they need to know. Um, definitely. Otherwise, Mm -hmm. if you get someone toxic on the team, it's, yeah, it's all downhill. Completely changes the dynamic and it can pull a business apart. Yep. And what are some things you recommend a building sustainable and kick-ass culture to help with the growth? So, I mean, this year that's been more important than ever with everybody not being able to see each other and not being able to get the team together. We used to do, everyone works remotely normally anyway. We live in different areas of the country, Mm -hmm. but we always get together in previous years. We've always got together every four, six weeks or so to actually be in the same place, which is amazing for a team that works remotely. But the number one thing that has carried through ever since we started, and a lot of the team have got young families and stuff, is family comes first. Yep. So I'm not, I'm not going to dictate to them what days, hours, et cetera, they have to work. As long as the work gets done and it gets done to the standard that we would all expect it to be done to, I don't mind when that happens. If you want to pick your little kid up from school, if you want to do the nativity play, you want to walk them to school in the morning, do it because you don't get that time back. And generally I found that everybody works super hard around that. Yeah. So that, that's kind of our number one. It's a really good modern attitude and approach to it because people mm. value that more and more these days have the flexibility, not just that, but also the trust from yeah. the manager that look, we don't care when you work. It's the matter of, you know, getting the output, getting the work done. Uh, and exactly. Getting- and generally it's done better when it's that way around anyway, I found. Um, The other thing that we, I really instill is move, move each day. So I try and get everyone to take an hour off at some point during the day, whether it's before work, middle of the day, after work, whatever it is, exercise, move your body, get out for a walk, get some fresh air because it helps. And it definitely keeps me sane. (laughs) And the last thing would probably be, I always ask them for input. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of autonomy. They, I don't ask them why they're doing certain things or how they're doing it or what method they're using because generally they're hired for a reason and often they are much better at certain parts of it than I am so I just let them get on with it and it works really well but when there's a big decision to be made I I do ask all of their input and really value what they've got to say because they're smart yeah good and tell our audience how you've handled balance (laughs) I don't know if I do (laughs) I am really working on that I exercise is my savior every single day. I do something that lets me switch off and unwind. And I've definitely got better at that over the last year. If that's one thing that 2020 has bought, it is a slightly better balance. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. And how much professional development have you invested in yourself? In myself? Not a lot. I read a lot. Mm -hmm. But all of the girls on the team, I sent on a digital and social media marketing course. Mm -hmm. So I've invested in them to have some of the skills that maybe I don't. But I I haven't done anything formal. I do a lot of reading. I talk to a lot of people. I listen to a a lot and read a lot. But I don't, I haven't had any formal professional development. No, I mean, that can cover, you know, podcasts, audio books, you know, business books, things like that, or business podcasts or specific areas of business. For example, if you're swatting up on marketing, you know. Exactly. Exactly. And have you had any mentors or coaches along the way? No one formal. I haven't had a formal business mentor or coach. I, again, I talk to a lot of people. I reach out to a lot of people. If there's somebody I find interesting on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, I will start a conversation with them and I will listen to what they've got to say because clearly they're interesting and smart. So I try and pick up nuggets along the way rather than have one set mentor. Yep. This is kind of the way I've handled it. Good. And I'm guessing you don't have a board of directors or advisors then? No, it's just me. Yeah, no. 
I know exactly where you're at. We started off, uh, yeah, there was four of us and, um, yeah, it's, it's tough times. You just got to go hard and, and hang in there, I guess. Yeah. And believe that it's all part of the journey and, and the hard work does pay off and you know, you will get there. It's, it. it's great. All right, Lucy, we're on our final five questions. What do you think is the hardest thing in growing a small business? The hardest thing I would say is balance and delegation. Yep. And favorite business book, which has helped you the most? I loved Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg. Not mm. necessarily for the, just as a woman, mm. but just, but generally get stuck in and do it. Particularly, as I said earlier, I'm working in a, an industry that is male dominated and I am a fair bit younger than most of my clients. And so I needed to show up with the confidence that I deserved my seat at that table. And I was completely worthy of being in that room. And my ideas were just as important as everyone else. Yes. So that, that brought a lot of confidence. And Cheryl Sandberg, she is the COO of Facebook. Is that right? Is indeed. And she's big on balance, isn't she? And flexibility. Yeah. yeah. I haven't read that book yet, but it's on my list. Mm. Oh, it's great. She's also got A to B. She's got ADD. A to B. Her second book is uh, is great as well. Great. Okay. Well, any any good podcasts or online learning tools you use for your your own for your own professional development? Sorry, Peter. <laughs> I don't listen to that many business podcasts. I listen to a lot of lifestyle type podcasts. I try and use them to help me with that balance, that, mm -hmm. that magical balance. But yeah. <laughs> we're all trying to aim for the i listened to a podcast called the expert with lauren arms which mm -hmm. is brilliant and um i love desert island discs there are so many interesting people on there and you just pick up the odd nugget every now and again you think huh that's clever yep never heard of that one what, what's that cover what's the main focus of that one it's amazing so it is a bbc radio 4 podcast and well it's actually aired on radio four and then turned into a podcast and basically the they have various different people come on and they are cast away to an island they can take eight tracks with them eight music tracks yep. uh, a luxury item a book and they get cast away and it's why they chose that music and oh, yeah. why that particular item and you get a good insight into their life and what they've been up to and just the other little good nugget comes out of it yeah that's good that sounds really interesting one tool you'd recommend to help grow a small business Oh my goodness. There's a few. So QuickBooks for accounting, mm -hmm. Canva for graphic design and, and yep. social media design, Hootsuite because it saves you so much time yep. and pen and paper. I never go anywhere without my pen and paper. Those ideas come and you just got to get them down. Yeah. And so you would have looked at quite a few social scheduling tools like Hootsuite. So you think that's the best out there? Personally, I do. I like it. I think it's super easy to use. We, the team can all collaborate on it together. It's not going to break the bank. Yep. And it does exactly what we need. Yeah. yeah it's one of the bigger ones, I think. Yeah, I hear a lot of great things about it. Yeah. Yeah. I right. highly recommend. Final, my favorite question. What would you tell yourself on day one of starting out? I would say keep going. Hold on tight. There's some serious ups and downs, but you're going to love it all. Yep. Yeah, great. Good advice. Well, thanks for your time today, Lucy. I think the audience will get a lot of value with what you've shared with us today. And uh, yeah, congratulations on your journey so far and looking forward to hearing the next few years. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been great. And for our audience, we would greatly appreciate a review in iTunes or whatever platform you listen to us on. More reviews means we bubble up higher in iTunes, etc. So more business owners looking for podcasts to help with their growth will find us. 